Hi, welcome to another Flow to Flow tutorial. Today we're going to learn about email verifications. There are a lot of time where you when you're building an application and you just want to verify your email. You know, you just want to send some you want to send your users maybe a pin code, you want to send them an OTP, you want to send them you know, you just want to send them stuff that really verifies they are the owner of an account. For example, you must have noticed that in financial applications, you get to you get to receive OTP over and over and over again, and it's something that is very common because you have to make your app very secure. If your app is not secure, there's just a very high chance that people wouldn't trust you. And um, if a person gets defrauded, a person gets all the way to Twitter, and there's this, you know. Twitter is everyone. It's um, there's this um, thing that um, people don't get to trust you. Why? Because when people get to uh, interface with your application, they go to social media to see what other persons are saying. And if people complain of security flaws, there's a very high chance that lots of persons will not use your application anymore. So that's why verification it's very, very important. And another reason why I think email verification is good, it's it's gonna help you avoid spams, you know. There are lots of persons who want to use your application for scam. There are lots of persons who just want to get into your application, use it, yeah, do what they want to do with it, or who want to, you know, just want that they're not regular users. They just want to spam other people or scam other people using your mobile application. So verifying that a particular person is really human, it's not a bot, it's very, very important. So there are two ways you can verify. And you know, there are two ways you verify in in a flutter flow. The first First is to use the inbuilt Flutter Flow email verification and the other is to use an API service. The API service, I love it because you can actually use it for more than just pin verification. You can use it for way, way multiple things, you know, like I said, sending OTP so much more during the life stages of your application. So let's get started with the first one. For the first one, you basically see that I, I have a login screen here, and if I click on into the workflow of the login screen, you see the users are able to create account. Then I will send them an email verification link. So this is automatic from Flutterflow. Uh, all you have to do is to click on the plus sign here, <laughs> just type in here and say send email verification. So that's in the Flutterflow authentication section of things. If you click on it, you it uh, Flutterflow will automatically take the email address of this current user whose account has been created. You know this current login user, and send the person a verification code. And once that verification code is sent, the person will have to go click on it. So you would have to create some sort of a snack bar, snack bar that says, hey, verification has been sent to you. You ought to go click it. That's it. If you do not click it, they wouldn't know if they should click it or not. So it's very important that you tell them, hey, this is what to do because the email verification will be sent to their email, but you really need to leave a link. You really need to leave a, a, a an instruction for them to click that particular link. That's something you really want to do for yourself. One reason why this is not, a, not so cool is because it takes time. You know, it takes time for users to, uh, uh, when they verify, it takes at least a few seconds, fraction of seconds for Flutterflow to update your database. So if you are, so for example, when you click on create account, uh, in an email verification is sent to this, um, um, to this app user and they come here. So when they come here, um, some persons will want to say, oh, if they come here, if they verified, I want them to go to another screen. If they've not verified, I want them to go to another screen. See. It's very important that you don't do this like this because it takes time. There's a difference. There's a time lag from when your user click on the verification link to when they finally, you know, move to another screen. So if you bring your user here and you, you put maybe you put something like a, a condition like on page load here. You put an on page load condition here when the page loads and say, Oh, if the page load, I want you to check if the person has verified or not. It's not going to work seamlessly. Users will have to go back and come into the page again before that particular function will work. So the easiest thing to do is to put it in a button. Yes, is to put it in a button that if the person has been verified, I want to move the person to another page. So the way you do it is that you click on the button and you come here and say, email verified, 
true or false this is how you get here i'm going to add a condition just a condition here yeah like so and the condition will be in the the condition will be in the authenticated user property so you can see it here email verified so if the email is verified yes if the email is not verified if it's true then we take we'll move the person to the other screen if it's false we'll move the person to the other screen so that's the way you you should do it so avoid using the on page load verification saying if i click or if they click on the create account they go to the next screen if they verify the account move them to a different screen it's not going to be cool that way so this this is the first way you could do it another way to do this another way to do this is to use an api service so there are there are lots of api service that you could use i basically use this api service this one here um it's called um you notify so i use it uh, i'm based in nigeria out of africa so i get to use this um my local service for most of the stints but if you are not here um you can use um email delivery send greed I think you notify also works all over the world. I think so, but you can also use SendGrid. SendGrid is really popular. Uh, the reason why I don't really use some of this is because um, they are not very global. Yeah, the um, requirements to use most of this application if you're an African, it's too much. So they're not very global, so that's why I don't get to use it. So you can also use um, MailChimp, you can use MailGon, you can use anything. Anything that just allow you to send emails from yourself all the way to your users, it's fine. It's fine for you to use and it's absolutely similar processes. I can assure you that. So this is the way you do it. You go back to the floor and you go to your your um, API calls and you create a, you create an API. You can create a group if you're going to be sending multiple emails or if you're going to be checking a lot of stuff. It's fine, but I'm just going to create this. I'm I'm using a single group, and I've defined called my my uh, API name email notification, and then I've created a post API. So this is the endpoint, and it's going to be a post call. The reason why it's a post call is because I'm sending a post. I'm making a post request, so I'm sending data somewhere. I'm not trying to get data from anybody. I'm just sending data somewhere and then we have the header which is json and then i have my api key which is a transition barrier um yeah i have my api key here and then what you're interested in is the body the body right so you can see what i've created i've created my 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 name which is the name of the company i've created my subject what this is going to be for i've created my html so you know there are two ways that your people would reach you read um, emails currently. I said that you read it via the HTML format or the test format. So both formats are here. So any of the format, it's fine. And then for this API I'm currently using, they have this thing called a status. And their status is either running or draft. So most, lots of API services will have this status, either running or draft. So is draft is not sent. You can't send draft because it's still in the draft mode. But if if the status is actually running, then the campaign is running because you send you're sending every email as a campaign. And then I have my list here. I have my list here. This is the name of the user I'm sending it to. This is the email of the user I'm sending it to. Um, how did I get any of this? I just used my variables. I have my name variable, the name of the user, the email of the user, and the pin I'm sending to the user. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So when I when I do this, when I click this, I, you, you you see something about the pin. The variable is a string. The name the name is a string, and the pin is an integer, because I'm sending I'm sending a four digit integer pin. That's what I'm doing. So when I click a response, <clears throat> when I click a test API call, <clears throat> when I just click a test API call, I am sent a a pin immediately. <clears throat> You can see it here. This is the pin one two three four. This is your verification pin one three one two three four. So that's basically the way I'll do it. So when I go back to when I'm done with fixing the API call, when I come back to my sign up on this, this is where I'm going to put it. You know, this is not not here. So on this, I will navigate to a pin verification screen. Yeah. So when you finish signing up, click on the sign up here. 
uh, instead of create instead of navi i would navigate them to the pin verification screen that's where i navigate them to what's the name of the pin again of the verification screen okay spin verification so instead of navigating them to create account because i think they verify the account i'll delete these actions i'll delete these actions and i will navigate them to a pin verification screen navigate to um pin verification and when they get to this pin verification this is where they will impute the pin and not just that i will also do something else in here i will make i will create an api call api call it will be it will be email notifications and i will set variables you know there are three variables here that i can set the first variable will be the name the second variable will be the email and the third variable will be the pin right so the first variable the name will be the current authenticated user display name the email will be the current authenticated user email and the pin will be will be random data random integer and then so it means zero max four and then we just click on confirm so once we do this we'll navigate to the um, pin verification screen and then we'll come back here. We'll, we'll also do one thing too we'll create a state so we'll create an app state to make sure this work we'll create an app state we'll just say pin verification we'll call this the same integer it doesn't have to be persistent it's fine we'll call it the same integer and after doing this we will also save the output of this particular variable we'll save the output of this particular variable um pin verification pin verified so we say pin verified here that's the output of the of the of the variable and then we can do a few things it's either we had created a pin before right that will be the easiest thing to do we'll create the pin before store it in the variable and then take that pin from the variable and put it in the api call yeah and that's something we can do and that's the easiest way to do things so i can go back here and just you know say um, state management i would say update app state and it's going to be the pin that's what i'm going to update and the pin here set value is going to be is going to be this it's going to be the um, random data random integer max is four and i'm going to say confirm and then i can go back to the api call again and I'll, i'm going to remove this don't worry i'll tell you why i'm going to remove this and just you know app states and this is going to be the pin verification so the reason why is so that we can um it's so that we can add a conditional so when we, we'll go back to the pin verification click right here where it says confirm and continue and click on the open add a conditional add a conditional action and this is going to be this if the widget state pin code equals to the app state pin verification yeah if it's true oh the pin code is a string the pin code is a string and the app state is a is an integer okay 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 i see what we're, what we're doing wrong so let's go ahead and turn this into an integer just a minute pin verification turn it into a string turn it into a string and let's go so we have to do something a bit a bit so we have to go back to our create account click this again and this is going to be random integer and then this is going to be this is going to be you know remove this is going to be our yeah we'll have to go back to our api call also api call also and variable 
and then we'll change pane to string which is fine and then I'll click on the save button I'll click on the save button that should do come back here and pin it will be the widget state and then we have pin which is fine navigate to pin verification and click on the pin verification here and the conditional again and we'll the conditional again and this is going to be conditional variable single conditions and it's going to be when the widget when the widget state the pin is equal to the set state which is um the app state the pin verification so if both of them are equal i want to go to the home page navigate to the home page if it's not equal if it's not equal i want to show show a snack bar i want to show a snack bar and say uh, your pin is incorrect so that's the way i'll do this there are other things that you can add to it you can also add a timer you can add a timer that when the, there's a timer uh here so you can add a timer widget yeah you can add a timer widget so what the timer widget will do is that it will keep counting once they once they fire the api once this is fired the timer widget will start counting from 59 to 0 and once it gets to 0 they can request for another api they can request for another round of api call you know they can make another pin verification just like the way you see it in most application so this is what you do the timer it's a very cool cool widget that you can actually use for so many things so um do go try check this out and let me know what you think in the comment section below if you're looking forward to getting started with flutterflow i have my flutterflow mastery course down there click on the link below and let me know what you think and also if you want to build your application on flutterflow feel free to click on the link down below also we'll be glad to help you scope the requirement and build something really cool for you thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe have a have a lovely lovely day ahead i'll see you in another video. Thank you.